always great defensively in the former MVP. Wow. A terrific Baseball presence. high sure depth. Almost like game. being there. It was awesome. Later today. That one is in the air foul. Starts out ahead of it. Oh. Hey gang, welcome back for Gamescape number four. You'll notice I've got some baseball stuff behind me. There's a reason for that. In this fourth episode, it is time to get back to looking at sports games. And coincidentally, we did our first Gamescaper survey uh, over the past couple weeks, and I got some feedback saying that I should concentrate more on sports games, uh, which I thought was interesting. And there was also a recommendation that I take a look or, or examine, discuss game design a bit more, which I could certainly do. I'll just have to uh, give some thought to uh, how to do that and what kind of topics to look at in that realm. So uh, I'm open to suggestions and more feedback on that. If you feel so inclined, leave uh, some comments for this video. So I'm working off some notes here uh, as, as we get into baseball is the theme of this webisode. In fact, I think I'm going to split this out into probably three videos. The first one being kind of an intro and uh, after that taking a closer look at two uh, particular games. The reason I wanted to do baseball is because if you're a sports gamer, you probably have more than one baseball game. Nearly every sports gamer I know uh, plays multiple uh, baseball games and enjoys several that are, that are very different. In my current collection, I've got four games. Pull these guys over here. Ah. So, what I've kept, I've had more baseball games than this, but what I've kept is Replay. This is my old Replay box. Excellent game, as many of you know. It has its own strengths. E each one of these games has its, has its own kind of character and emphasis. History Maker Baseball, the, the newest of the bunch. This one here is a new kid on the block. No, I guess it's not. Stratomatic. Everybody's heard of Stratomatic, right? If you're a sports gamer, you have. And lastly, all I've got to show you here is a, is a binder. This is ballpark baseball. And it doesn't have a fancy box. It doesn't even have a specific kind of rule book with it. We'll talk about that in a bit because the two games I really want to feature on this video and the next couple is going to be History Maker and Ballpark. Why? Because they approach the sport from almost polar opposite directions. And I thought it would be fun to do a comparison of those two games and kind of talk about it point by point. Okay, gang, before we get into a more in-depth discussion of History Maker and Ballpark, here's a quick shot of the, uh, the player cards for those four games, Replay, Strat, History Maker, and, and Ballpark, all laid out together. So if you're familiar with any one of those, you'll have an idea of what the cards are like for the other three. Now, uh, what I've got here is three pages of notes uh, that I'm going to try to drill through. Forgive me for looking down, but uh, I want to try to stay on track. So here we go. History Maker and Ballpark were made for 
very different purposes, sort of. I mean, they're both simulating baseball to some degree, but the emphasis is and, and the approach to the sport are entirely different. And I think that's why I enjoy them both, uh, for, for providing a different experience. Ballpark is very traditional. It's an old school game, I believe, designed in the late 1950s and made commercially available, I believe, for the first time in the 70s. The, the emphasis of ballpark is clearly to put you in the manager's shoes in almost every detail, in fact, when it comes to in-game management. Uh, the emphasis of ballpark is really on risk reward of making those decisions, stealing a base, base running, how to position fielders, all that jazz. History Maker, completely different view. It's a broader view. There are some managerial decisions, but there's also an observer's pers perspective in terms of certain things that a manager might in reality be involved in are kind of taken out of his hands in History Maker, but that is done for playability purposes. So uh, stolen bases, for example, there's some, there's some automatic steals in History Maker that kind of remind me of some of the results in uh, APA, I believe, is the one I'm thinking of. I don't have APA anymore. It's been a while. At any rate, uh, so mechanically, History Maker, most of the results come off of a main chart. So it's you can kind of compare it to Replay or APA in that regard. You roll your three dice, and it has a gradient distribution. Think of it like an inverted pyramid, where you know, the majority of the results in the one range, you, 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 read the, you always read the dice low to high, regardless of what color die and all that stuff. So, it, it, so your one results are your most common, and then two and three and so forth. From there, uh, History Maker takes a flow chart kind of approach in its resolution. So it breaks things out into three tiers with the pitcher's column having priority followed by the batter's column and then there's a fielding column which you know brings other aspects that aren't pitcher and batter into the picture and I think that's really neat I, I think that's one of the strengths of this game it feels it just feels right for, for baseball plays to emphasize what the pitcher is doing and if the pitcher is not influencing things or, or, or not controlling things in, in a way that plays to his strengths, boom, you look at the batter's column. What can the batter do with that opportunity? And maybe the batter doesn't have the qualities active at the moment to take advantage of that. And the ball's in play and fielders you know, begin to exert their influence on whether a play, how a play resolves, that sort of thing. So that's the upside. The downside, I would say, of having a master chart uh, like, like History Maker has is uh, ball distribution for putouts. If you're really pedantic, I guess, about that sort of thing, uh, History Maker doesn't necessarily, isn't going to reflect really, real batter tendencies and that sort of thing. Now, that kind of detail, that level of detail is just not what History Maker is actually about. It's, it's about more of a narrative experience to a ball game. History Maker also, after the main chart, it's got uh, several different micro charts, uh, mini charts and micro charts. The, the mini charts being a two die roll, also red low to high, and then the micro charts, which are just one six sided die to resolve some specific scenario. So ballpark mechanically uses a 1 to 50 range. So the game was originally designed I believe with a like a stack of uh, cards that you could flip and draw numbers. In fact when you read the directions it still says you know draw a number or a number is drawn or that sort of thing. Um, however by the time I got into it uh, about I think eight years ago or so they were uh, selling dice. So two 10-sided dice with one die numbered, uh, what, zero through four, and then your other one through 10. 
and then all zeros is a 50, I believe. But it's a little clunky uh, re reading the dice that way. It works, don't get me wrong. But making matters worse was the dice that I got were clear and just hard to read. So I know most ballparkers uh, tend to use, you know, like a programmable calculator or a dice app. I have a dice app on my phone. Results 1 through 25 are on the batter's card, 26 through 50, on the pitcher's card. So you go, oh, okay, well, it's like Strat. It's another 50-50, or like Dynasty, another 50-50 kind of approach. But not really, because for any kind of statistical outliers, the batters and the pitchers both have control ratings listed at the bottom of the card where they can override a result on the other one's card. And that's really cool. So if you have a batter that rarely walks uh, or rarely strikes out, <laughs> conversely, anything outside of the, the normal realm, then you have controls for that. Uh, you have on the pitcher's card, if, if you've got a pitcher that rarely gives up home runs or is uh, really good at getting ground ball double plays and that sort of thing. You can, you can model that uh, with, this, with this sort of approach. So, so in terms of the resolution process, History Maker, uh, I've talked about, I've alluded to it a little bit already. Resolving in a bat is generally fairly quick. You'll check on average two or three qualities before you get your result. Sometimes, you know, in the pitcher's column, the very first column, boom, that quality is active, and you check one quality and you're done. And the game really moves along when that happens. There are other instances where, like the 125 result uh, comes to mind on the chart, where you've got a quality and an exception symbol, and a quality and another kind of exception symbol in each column. So as you drill through that one, you might be checking six different things to make sure. You know, if you're real familiar with your teams and your players, eh, you can go, you can get through that fairly quickly too. If not, your eyeballs are searching around a little bit, and, and so that can get fairly involved. So 19 of the 168 main chart results uh, will send you to many charts to resolve the at bat or perhaps the next at bat even. And uh, th this is, you know, that sounds like it would be what, 9.5% 9, 9 of the time, roughly. However, the way, due to the way qualities work, you'll be hitting those mini charts more than 10% of the time. Because as you drill through them, you know, that, that quality doesn't apply, that, that's, that, that symbol doesn't apply, quality no, symbol no, okay, boom, we're on a mini chart. So you'll go there quite a bit, uh, but it's not overdone, I don't think. So those mini charts, however, are where History Maker, I think, kind of takes it to the next level because then you start to integrate stuff like player experience, intangibles like team chemistry, hot and cold streakiness, and umpire qualities. So, you know, a broader view of baseball, a more narrative view in terms of giving you a story as to why things happened. And so that brings a whole new dimension to the game and to, to modeling baseball on your tabletop. Uh, you know, I applaud Keith for, for, for doing that, and I think it's safe to say that that approach has resonated with a certain segment of people who had probably spent decades playing some of these other games and wanted a, a different experience and an alternative. So well done in that regard. So ballpark, you have your 1 to 50 range of results. You look at the appropriate card, you get your result, check your control ratings, that sort of thing. And if there are no runners on base, ballpark is about as fast as, say, Strat Basic. For example, you might have an inning that goes medium fly to left, ground out to short, you know, routine play, and a strikeout. 
and boom, you could be done with that in 20 seconds or so and on to the next half an inning. When you get men on base, ballpark becomes a whole different ball game, which if you think about it, baseball's like that, right? That's where all these situational variables and decisions come into play in terms of how you want fielders to react and anticipate and you know what you can do with, with your batter hit and run and bunt and steal and base runner aggressiveness and all that kind of jazz. So in terms of ballpark effects, History Maker is designed from a neutrality standpoint and then if you want to add ballpark effects in, then you have a card that is tagged uh, in terms of big or small, uh, applying to the, uh, the the park's foul ground and outfield walls, if you will, so that influences you know the likelihood of converting a a foul ball to an out with big foul ground, or uh, if, with a small outfield, you know, a, a fly ball that might be. Uh, a normal, normally an out elsewhere turns into a home run, that sort of thing. So very simple to do and to add on if you want to add that aspect to your game. Well done. For ballpark, all the results are integrated and you can't really remove the ballpark chart from the ballpark experience. It's so completely integrated and as you might expect, a game called ballpark should really have a great emphasis on ballpark effects, and it does. I really think it's a wonderful piece of game design, one of, one of my favorites, in fact, in sports games. And it integrates not just the type of ball hit, but also the fielder's ability and the, you know, the effects of the park itself. All three of those factors, all together, with just one additional roll. So you get your you get your main situation off of the player cards and then you reference that against the ballpark chart and pow, resolve it there. Most of the time that's how it plays out. So very cool. Uh, but yeah, to be able to do that with one roll, you know what, speaking of rolls, uh, I was at a bakery near downtown yesterday and <laughs> We interrupt the story about a bakery to bring you this important news flash. A grassroots movement is now underway to change the pronunciation of play.com to play.com. When asked about this development, founder, chief designer, and custodian Keith Avalone said, why I like the name of my company. And now, back to Gamescape. So I told her, well then, I guess I should have ordered a bunt cake. Ha! Get it? Bob? Bob. I'm getting a little annoyed with Bob. Hmm. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and move on then. Managing the game. With History Maker, overall, uh, I may have said this before earlier in the video, but I think History Maker kind of compares to APA in terms of how it handles the in-game experience. But it, of course, it brings a lot more to the table than that with game day decisions and influences and the intangibles and all, all these other things. It's pretty neat. Uh, it does have some automated base stealing. Base running is, is mostly automated. You can... Uh, the, there are some mini micro charts that you can use if you want to add to those decisions, take a bit more risks in, in those cases. It doesn't really have lefty righty splits per se. There's a couple results uh, uh, where, where that becomes a factor, but it's not really an integrated uh, emphasis of the game. Pitcher fatigue, uh, I think, however, is one of the strong points of in-game management for History Maker. Uh, it, it runs through a progression of situational qualities where 
when your pitchers first come into the game, they are fresh. They have the fresh quality. And as the game wears on, you know, your starters in innings four, five, and six are semi-fresh. So you've got that decider die. It's a 50-50 die that activates or ignores qualities for a given circumstance. So half the time, they're kind of half fresh, uh, not reliably so in, in, in the middle innings. And, and then there's also good use of the struggler quality, which can be applied, you know, once a pitcher allows uh, base runners and that sort of thing. And you combine the struggler and the use of the fresh, semi-fresh, or the absence of fresh altogether, uh, along with the, 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 the struggler tag that can come and go. And it's, I, I really enjoy that aspect of the game. It feels like it really forces your hand, and you're like, "Oh, man, I got to take this. I got to take this guy out now," and and uh, and you don't want to. So, <laughs> uh, so that's really cool. Uh, ballpark managing is very involved. You have to decide everything. You you have to decide how your runners are running. I shouldn't say you have to. You should decide <laughs> how your how your runners are running. If you're in a face-to-face -face game and you're going full detail, yeah, you're going to have to make all these decisions just like a real baseball manager. Uh, so base runner aggressiveness, steals, bunts, hit and runs. Uh, you can find yourself considering uh, various defensive alignments, whether to hold or not hold a runner, move fielders halfway all the way in, charging, outfielders moving in, moving back for a no doubles defense. Um, all of that stuff applies. It's all there uh, in, in ballpark. And frankly, I think this is where ballpark overwhelms a lot of solo players. To be honest, when I play ballpark solitaire, I don't use all the bells and whistles. I kind of say, okay, well, runners are by default in the normal mode. And, and I just kind of let it roll. And, and I'll make a few calls in terms of base stealing and stuff like that. I don't move the outfielders around much. I don't think I've, yeah, not when, not when playing solitaire. And I'll, I'll do some stuff with the infield uh, on occasion. But for, for the most part, I rely on the solitaire strategy charts, which are now back in the game here in just the past few years. I was able to get them after the fact. And so when you're playing solitaire uh, and, and you say, okay, I'm going to call for a hit and run here, then you check this chart and see if the defensive side is an anticipating that or perhaps something else. Maybe you catch them out of position. Maybe they read the situation exactly right and nail you on it. Uh, Lefty righty is on the cards and uh, the player on, on the, both the batter and pitcher cards and furthermore, it breaks things down into clutch performance, sort of. It has a, has a column for bases empty and for, for runners on and how those players perform in those cases. And it's, I don't think it's really proper to think of that as a clutch rating so much, but it is a way to fine tune how those players perform in terms of producing RBIs if you're a hitter or in terms of capping rallies if, if you're a pitcher. So I think that's really the strength of that, to, 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 call, it, to call it a uh, clutch set of results is really a misnomer. So in pitcher fatigue, uh, in, in, uh, for, for ballpark pitcher fatigue, it's easy to kind of look at it, look at it and dismiss it as being outdated. It is a little bit clunky. It's not easy to grasp. Even, even seasoned baseball veterans have, have kind of looked at the system, which I'm not going to attempt to explain to you here, um, and, and kind of had a hard time applying it uh, the first few times they play the game. And it involves basically taking the results that you see on the card and kind of mentally substituting those for other results. So what would normally be an out becomes a hit. What would normally be a hit becomes an extra base hit. The way the language that's used to explain it 
is, is a little difficult to grasp. So this is not one of the stronger areas of, uh, of ballpark, despite you know, the, all the things it does well. Uh, it feels a little archaic. And uh, well, you know what? I think that's, that's what I've got. Both of these are terrific games designed for entirely different purposes. And uh, as you see, but I think they both stand very well on their own merits and, and doing the things that they were designed to do. So in the next couple videos, we'll take a closer look at History Maker and we will take a closer look at Ballpark, some actual play experience. So I hope you join me for that and uh, see you in the next video.